went on to tour with Communicators for Christ in 2005 on the See Her Speak tour. From there, she went to Oxford University, where four years later she graduated with a master's degree in chemistry. She from there went to Germany uh, for a year and a half to work on a PhD project. She's now back in the States to help ICC with a lot of writing and planning for their programs. I have known this young lady for the last 18 and a half years. <laughs> She's very near and dear to my heart. Last year, she came to you all right here at Regent University through Skype from Germany, but she's here with us today. Please help me welcome one of my biggest role models, my big sister, Elizabeth Kays. <laughs> Go ahead and do the next. 
The desire to uphold truth has no business coming into conflict with love for another person. Truth and love are to be held together as friends, not separated as if they're enemies. In my desire to say what was true, I failed to love. I ask Anne's forgiveness for this. So instead of becoming one of those online debates that just rages and on and on and everybody ends up hating each other, the simple act of inviting somebody to dinner changed it to this. It changed it to something redemptive and reconciling and beautiful that people are now holding up uh, as something to, to aspire to. But I think the story's about something bigger. It's not just about, oh, this is a, an example of people who did things right or, or of a good thing that happened. It's, a, it's an example of what to do when we've messed up, right? I mean, these were some pretty big name people. And they said some things pretty publicly that maybe weren't the best, but maybe are things they're not proud of. But this is what they did after the mistake was made. She responded in grace instead of getting angry back. And he responded by understanding what he'd done and coming back to her. I hope you won't make mistakes. I hope you learn all these lessons now about respecting and loving other people. But I want to tell you what happened to me last week. We were working on a project, actually, for this convention. You're going to see the results of that in a little while, uh, in the next couple days. I've been the one behind the scenes on Facebook posting all the pictures of the history of ICC, so I've been collecting all these photos uh, and getting them ready to share with you guys in a lot of different ways. And I've actually had some uh, chronic fatigue health issues for the last few months, so I've been kind of on the couch putting this together, putting up photos, uh, and everybody's been really helping me at our house. But we were working on this project, and I forced myself to get up and get things filmed and get things ready and laid out and everything, and I got upset because nobody else seemed to be working as hard as I was, me who had been sitting on the couch for three months. <laughs> so did I sit down and talk about it with them? Did I respond with grace? No. I yelled at people. I got angry at people. I refused to work with a member of my family for three solid days. That's not something I would recommend. But there's going to be times in life, whether you're on a team or in college or with your colleagues and friends after college, when you're going to get so angry or so hurt or so insecure that you're going to say things that really you wouldn't normally say. You're going to forget all the work that you put into using your words well, and you're going to use them to hurt people. And what I want to remind you of is when that happens, when you forget about respect, when you forget about reconciliation, and you feel like there's no table in the world open to you, there's always another table who are welcome to come and sit and eat and drink and ask for help, and ask for help to make things better down here, to ask to start over and for God to show us what we need to do to make things right. I want to show you one last quote by a popular TV chef, one of my personal heroes. <laughs> the real miracle of food is that connectivity. People ask, what's the most important tool in the kitchen? I answer, the kitchen table. If you don't have a kitchen table to sit down at and feed people, nothing you make matters. Thank you.